Ash collapses to his knees as Tetsuya, now better known as the Iron Masked Marauder, stomps away, a villainous cackle on his lips. Voltorb, having made its way back, nudges Ash to check if he's okay, and with a weak smile the boy thanks the ball, saying he's fine, though they need to get back to Azalea Town right now. Taking off at top speed, they cut a straight path towards home, and thankfully when they arrive back in town, Tetsuya is nowhere to be seen. However, Ash doesn't allow himself to ease up, sprinting to his house and throwing open the door so fast that he almost trips over Maisie who is inside. Quizzically, the girl asks what's wrong, but Ash has no time to explain, instead simply asking his cousin where Grandpa is. Maisie says she thinks he's in his workshop out back, and so after shooting her a smile, Ash and Voltorb head there. Hearing them coming from a way off, Kurt chides Ash not to bother him when he's working, but is struck dumb when Ash tells him he has big news. He saw Tetsuya. Urgently, Kurt asks what happened, and so Ash relays everything, including the Marauder's message and his sinister dark balls. Scowling, Kurt says he always knew this day would come eventually. It looks like he and Electrode will have to take a leaf from Grandpa Melly's book and hit the road for a while, and if Ash is smart, he'll do likewise. Sadly, Ash asks what about his work here, but with a sigh, Kurt tells him no one will miss it. His way of doing things are from a bygone era, and he ought to realize it's time to pack it in. With this sober word of parting, Kurt rises from his stool, turns off his kiln and heads for the fence, and Electro's grove beyond. Having a bad feeling, Ash follows, and it's lucky he does, as he and Kurt soon spot heavy boot prints in the brush coming from a different direction, but definitely headed towards Electrode's hiding place. Picking up speed, the grandfather and grandson burst through the copse of trees, and to their horror see Tetsuya and his two Pokemon battling against Electrode. Electrode is putting up a good fight, but between its advanced age and numbers disadvantage, it's starting to flag. Wanting to help its dad, Voltorb fires off a Thundershock which does little to Scyther despite its typing, though it does draw the attention of the Marauder, who cackles that this is better than he could have hoped. Now he'll get to see Kurt's face when he steals the old geezer's prized electrode. Shaking with rage, Kurt tells the younger man that for the sake of their former friendship, he'll give him one chance. Leave this place and repent his wicked ways, or else. Still smirking, Tetsuya asks, or else what? And Kurt answers, or else we'll make you leave. The Iron Mask Marauder jeers for his old mentor to bring it on, pointing out how his two dark Pokemon already have Electrode backed into a corner. But furiously, Ash declares that things are different now, since Electrode isn't alone, as beside him Voltorb sparks angrily to show its determination. Voltorb then fires off another electric attack at Scyther, with similarly negligible results, but this time Tetsuya is less amused, telling his newly caught bug type to deal with this little pest. Turning soulless eyes to Voltorb, Scyther moves so fast that it seems to vanish, reappearing and whacking Voltorb into a tree. However, Voltorb has been knocked around enough today that it's starting to get a feel for moving through the air, and so spinning slightly, it is able to build up enough momentum to bounce back, smacking into Scyther's face and sending it reeling. Landing a little harder than it would have wanted, Voltorb then blasts his opponent with another Thundershock until Sneasel leaps in, slashing it and once more turning things into an unfair 2v1. Scyther then joins in on this, and against two high-level foes, the young orb is helpless to do more than let out sounds of pain. Ash angrily orders Scyther and Sneasel to leave his Pokemon alone, but Tetsuya just laughs, saying this is what a real Pokemon battle is. No rules, just strength and violence. If Ash can't cope with that, he should go crawl back to the nursery with his baby cousin and let the real men do the fighting. Ash, however, has other ideas, rushing in and shielding Voltorb from a particularly brutal overhead slash. This, however, sends the young man crashing to the ground, unable to endure another hit, and from his end of the clearing, Kurt cries out Ash's name. Tetsuya smirks that the kid is an idiot, telling his Pokemon to finish the pipsqueak off, but is stopped when a yellow light fills the clearing. The source of the light? Voltorb. Having witnessed the callous way these villains would hurt its first friend, a rage like Voltorb has never felt before fills the electric type, and it begins to glow bright yellow, with white eyes. In a hushed voice, Kurt breathes that he can't believe it. This is the noble frenzy his grandfather told him about. Even Electrode looks shocked to see this, while Tetsuya jeers that it's evolved from beach ball to light bulb. Big whoop. 
Unfortunately for the Iron Mask Marauder, and fortunately for our hero, this is in fact a big whoop as when Voltorb fires its next Thundershock, it crackles with divine energy, engulfing Scyther. Where once the bug shrugged this move off, now it cannot withstand it for an instant, collapsing to the ground in unconsciousness. Tetsuya growls that this is impossible, his Dark Ball makes his Pokemon invincible, but Kurt retorts that evidently that is not the case, since his technology is no match for the true bonds between friends. To prove this point, Kurt then looks to his own partner, asking if he would like to do the honours and blow this young upstart away. Electrode rumbles happily and turns to face his now singular opponent, charging up a blast of green energy. When the beam is charged, Electrode lets out a mighty chloroblast, which engulfs Sneasel, sending it flying far away, as beneath them the ground shakes under the raw power just unleashed. Now out of Pokemon, Tetsuya vows that he'll make Ash and Kurt pay for this by capturing both Voltorb and Electrode, before returning Scyther to its Dark Ball and taking off with his jetpack in search of Sneasel. When they are alone, Ash thanks Voltorb for protecting him, while Kurt in turn thanks Electrode for defeating Tetsuya. The old man then declares that they will still have to leave, since if the Marauder is willing to try once, he'll try again. This saddens Ash and Voltorb, and so as the boy goes to hug his grandpa goodbye, Voltorb rolls up to place his forehead against its father's in a gesture of love and farewell. After a moment, Kurt pulls out a faded fast wall of his own and tells Electrode it's time they were off. And with a deep rumble, Electrode agrees, allowing for Kurt to place it inside the ball then head back to the house. After a time, Ash and Voltorb follow, and there is an air of sadness as they see Delia and Maisie both grieving Kurt's departure. In a small voice, Delia tells her son that Kurt told her what he did, and that she's so proud of him and Voltorb, to which Ash smiles that he was just doing the right thing. After all, he's a Pokemon trainer now. Delia nods, then asks how his battle with Bugsy went. Ash admits that he lost, but he and Voltorb are going to do some training now, and they're confident that before long they'll be up to the challenge of beating Bugsy. Maisie grins that she knows he's going to clobber Bugsy next time, and Ash promises that he'll do his best before he and his starter head out to resume their interrupted training in Ilex Forest. Just from the encounter with Tetsuya and his Scyther, Ash can tell that Voltorb has gotten stronger. Its movements now have a sense of purpose, and when he gives commands, Voltorb responds more automatically, where once there was a sense of disconnect like it had to remember how to do its attacks. This makes training much easier, though despite their best efforts, Ash and Voltorb cannot figure out a way to reactivate Voltorb's frenzy state. A shame since the power it imparted was incredible. However, due to their teamwork, they are able to defeat several bug and grass types they encounter within the forest. Unfortunately, none really meet the purview of his apricorn balls, which is a shame since he would have liked to be able to catch a new friend. But nonetheless, by the time he finishes for the day, Ash is confident that he and Voltorb will be able to defeat Bugsy in the morning. That evening, a heavy mood hangs over Ash and his family with Kurt's departure. Ash and Delia can at least find comfort in the knowledge that what he is doing is out of nobility, but poor Maisie is in the dark, expressing great confusion over why Grandpa just up and left. Delia explains that he's going on a work trip, but this of course gives rise to a number of new questions that she cannot answer, like why, or when is he coming home? Ash tries to help, but not knowing what to say, the best he can do is assure his cousin that Grandpa will be home soon. After she goes to bed, Ash tells his mother that he's going to find Tetsuya and stop him, since that's the only way Kurt and Electrode can come home. Delia tells him to be careful, since Kurt wouldn't want him getting hurt for his sake, but quickly realises that this is pointless, and so instead shares stories of Kurt's own youth as a Pokemon trainer, and how much Ash reminds her of those stories. The next morning, Ash and Voltorb head out to Bugsy's gym bright and early. The bug specialist is surprised to see them back so soon, but when Ash tells him of his intent to challenge him to a rematch, Bugsy is happy to accept, saying it'll be the same rules as yesterday, Scyther vs Voltorb with no time limit. Ash has no complaints with this, and so the pair of trainers take their positions, while Bugsy brings out Scyther and Voltorb rolls past Ash to face its opponent. Having faced down a soulless Scyther with sinister intent, Bugsy's Scyther no longer seems so scary, and so when the bug flying type lunges in with a fury cutter, Ash is able to decisively call for a dodge, followed by a thundershock. This hits and Bugsy praises Ash for taking what he said about staying calm to heart, though he's afraid that won't be enough to beat his superior bug type. 
He then calls for a swords dance, and on cue, Scyther begins to spin in place, its fighting spirit rising as it performs the war dance. Ash tells Voltorb to watch out since Scyther's just made itself a lot stronger, and so Voltorb readies itself for a counterattack. This comes in the form of a fury cutter which hits, but instead of looking afraid, Ash smiles, telling his friend that he doesn't know what he's just done. Voltorb soars backwards, but using the trick it learned from the battle against Tetsuya, spins to build up momentum in a slightly different direction so it can bounce back at Scyther. Slamming into Scyther's thorax, Voltorb spins again, leaping over to another tree and pinballing itself around the field. Scyther gives chase, but with all the trees around, the bug type in its trainer can never predict Voltorb's next destination, making the orb a tricky one to track, all the while building up the speed and force of Voltorb's next jump. Finally, when Ash thinks it has enough momentum, he tells Voltorb to use Tackle, which the little electric type does, simply bouncing back the way it just came and slamming into Scyther at point blank range. It then begins to bounce again, building up more momentum, though to shake things up it will occasionally bounce backwards to strike Scyther, teaching the bug to keep its distance. Seeing nowhere to catch Voltorb with melee attacks, Bugsy instead has Scyther return to the center of the field and use Swords Dance repeatedly to power itself up to the max. Ash tries to prevent this by having Voltorb interrupt the dance with more tackles, but Bugsy quickly figures out a way to counter this, having Scyther alternate between Swords Dance and Double Team, so that every time Voltorb strikes a Scyther, it vanishes, revealing itself to be a Double Team after image. Finally, when its attack is as high as it can go, Bugsy tells Scyther to chop down all the trees with Fury Cutter. This serves two purposes, the first being to cut off Voltorb's movement options, and the second being that each successive Fury Cutter is twice as strong as the last, meaning that when Scyther is done with all the trees, its claws are glowing bright in preparation to use a super powered and super effective move on Voltorb. Ash and Voltorb know that this is their do or die moment, and so decide to put all their faith in one last Thundershock. Charging up the attack, Voltorb lets loose while Scyther rushes in. Electrical energy bathes the bug, but even super effective damage will not keep it from its victory, and so with a cry of pain, fury and adulation, Scyther raises its claw to deliver the finishing blow. From his side of the field, Bugsy tells Ash that he's grown a lot, but unfortunately it's time for this battle to end. Grinning, Ash agrees, though tells Bugsy he needs to look more closely at his Pokemon. Bugsy doesn't know what Ash is talking about, but taking his friend's word for it, he looks over at Scyther, and to his shock finds that though it is still standing with its claw raised, its eyes are spirals. Ash explains that all those momentum powered tackles really added up in the end, and then a super effective Thundershock was all he needed to finish Scyther off. He then has Voltorb stop using Thundershock, and at once Scyther keels over, the only thing that had kept it standing before being the electricity locking up all its muscles. Bugsy recalls his starter, telling Ash this was an amazing battle, and proof that even as a gym leader he still has a lot to learn. In fact, he was wondering if Ash could do him a favor. Ash grins of course, asking what his friend needs, and Bugsy tells him that he would like to accompany him on his Johto journey, since though he loves his new position, nothing gives him the same thrill as testing his limits alongside Ash. Ash grins that he'd be happy to have him, though warns that a bad man named the Iron Masked Marauder may be coming after him, so if he tags along, that'll be putting Bugsy in his crosshairs as well. However, instead of sounding worried, Bugsy laughs that this is more reason to have him come along, since otherwise who'll watch Ash's back? Ash rebuffs that he and Voltorb can look after themselves, but nonetheless, he says he'd be happy to have Bugsy come with him, telling him to meet him outside the Ilex Shrine in an hour. An hour later, after healing Voltorb at the Pokemon Center and saying goodbye to his mum and Maisie, Ash and Voltorb are waiting by the Ilex Shrine for Bugsy. The shrine itself is an old wooden structure, kind of like a mini house said to be in honor of the Guardian of the Forest. As he waits, Ash can't help but feel eyes upon him, and though this is hardly unexpected in a forest teeming with life, something about these particular set of eyes seem to be boring into his back. Turning around, Ash can't see anything at first, but as he looks closer, he spots two blue glowing eyes peering at him from the dark depths of the forest. Tentatively, the boy calls out a greeting to the eyes, with Voltorb doing likewise, and in response they seem to grow larger, or in actuality closer. Finally, the Watcher makes its way into the light, and to Ash's surprise, it's a small green Pokemon with a large head and a pixie-like body. 
Something about this Pokemon seems oddly familiar, and so acting on a hunch, Ash pulls out the Book of Legends Maisie gave him and flips through the pages until suddenly he spots a Pokemon that looks like this one. Looking down, he sees that its name is Celebi and can't help but be amazed by how right Professor Oak was in his concept art of this Pokemon. Smiling warmly, Ash greets Celebi by name and this delights the sprite, who buzzes excitedly before dashing back into the tree cover. Ash can't help but feel a little disappointed by this reaction, saying he thought things were going well, but it seems his instincts on this were correct, as moments later Celebi returns with an armful of red berries. It then hands one to Ash before popping another into its own mouth. Looking to Voltorb, Ash silently asks if it thinks he should eat this, and in return the orb gives him the closest thing it can to a shrug without arms or shoulders. Trusting his gut, and hoping his mum never finds out about this, Ash follows Celebi's lead and bites down on the berry. Sweet juice immediately fills his mouth, and excitedly Ash says this is really good, encouraging Voltorb to try one. Celebi happily hands Ash two more of these berries, and so Ash pops one of them in the hole on top of Voltorb's head before eating his own. Trainer and Pokemon then make a shared happy noise, enjoying this tasty treat, while Celebi floats alongside them, also clearly having a great time. However, before their new friend can do anything more, they all hear the sound of a twig snapping, and this causes Celebi's joyous expression to be replaced with fear. Confidently, Ash tells Celebi not to worry, since he'll protect it, but when they hear the sound of approaching footsteps, this proves too much for the pixie, and it vanishes back into the trees. Ash is saddened to see it go, but has little time to grieve, as the footsteps grow louder and he readies himself for battle. However, this proves to be wholly unnecessary, as the source of the noise turns out to be Bugsy, with the purple-haired boy apologising for being late. Ash says it's fine, but tells him that he missed out on seeing a really cool Pokemon before showing him the illustration of Celebi. The gym leader admits that this is pretty cool, though from his tone, Ash can tell that his old friend doesn't really believe him, probably thinking that Ash is trying to trick him for some reason. However, before Ash can protest his honesty, Bugsy changes the subject, saying the reason he's late is because of this. He then pulls out a glistening red metallic circle with black spots, a hive badge. Ash asks what this is for, and Bugsy explains that since he beat him in his gym, Ash is entitled to this, saying that if he wants to get stronger, the gym challenge might actually be a good way to do it. Ash admits that he never really thought about taking the gym challenge, since he just mostly wanted to have adventures with his friends, but now that Bugsy says it, he can definitely see his point. Taking the badge at last, Ash pins it to his vest, asking his friend where the nearest gym would be. Bugsy says Goldenrod City would probably be the closest, and so Ash says that if it's alright with him, he'd like to make this their next destination. Bugsy has no objections, and so the two young men and Voltorb begin their trek north through Ilex Forest. Ash enjoys having Bugsy with him, reminding him of old times when they'd play in the forest together as kids. However, Bugsy does have one annoying habit that slows their pace. He has to observe every single bug type they come across. At first, Ash is excited, since he hopes to catch one, but Bugsy forbids him from attacking a bug Pokemon unprovoked like that, saying he imagines Ash wouldn't like it very much if someone barged into his home and started causing trouble. Ash admits that he's probably right, and so the rest of the day is spent in calm contemplation of the gym leader's favourite type. Eventually they reach a break in the tree line which lets the night sky in, and so only now realising the time, decide to make camp for the evening and continue in the morning. As they work setting up camp and preparing dinner, Ash and Bugsy talk about how this is the furthest Ash has ever been from home, and how it feels weird to know that he's not going to see his family tonight, or tomorrow, or even the next day. Bugsy, who's had to do a bit of travelling on league business, tells him it's not so bad, but the black-haired boy grins that he's not upset or anything, since he has his friends with him, and they're on the sort of adventure he's always dreamed of. It's just… different. Bugsy nods sagely, then says he has just the slice of home Ash needs, grinning that his dad made them some orangeberry muffins for dessert. Ash grins that he'll be sure to thank Bugsy's dad next time they're back home, but as Bugsy goes over to where they'd stash their bags, he sees that his backpack is rustling slightly. Whispering to Ash to come back him up, Bugsy tiptoes closer to the bag, and peeking inside, spots a Pokemon merrily munching on his muffins. 
Feeling the boy's eyes on him, the Pokemon pokes its head up, revealing itself to be a Letty Bar with a big blue berry smear all over its face. Bugsy is in two minds about this creature. On one hand, it is another beautiful bug, but on the other, it stole his muffins and he was really looking forward to eating those. However, Ash has no such uncertainty, asking Bugsy if he can battle this one, since it did just barge into his home and start causing trouble. Bugsy shrugs that he supposes that is fair, and so steps back so that Ash and Voltorb can challenge it. At first, Ladybus seems more inclined towards a nap than a battle after that meal, but when Voltorb hits it with a thundershock, the little bug realises that it now must dance for its dinner. Rising into the air, Ladyba narrowly dodges another thundershock before spectral pink hearts begin to circle it. Ash doesn't know what this means, and so is caught off guard when Ladybug uses a track. As the hearts hit Voltorb, its own eyes transform into big pink hearts, and steam starts shooting out of the hole on top of its head. Ash asks his partner what's wrong with it, and Bugsy explains what just happened, saying a challenger once used this same trick on him and Scyther, completely immobilizing his bladed bug. Ash asks if there's anything he can do, but Bugsy shakes his head, saying if he had another Pokemon he could swap Voltorb out, but as it stands, they'll just have to wait and see if Voltorb can get over its infatuation long enough to attack. Ash declares that he's sure a pretty face won't be able to distract Voltorb, and so calls for another Thundershock. However, this falls on deaf ears, with Voltorb simply blasting out more steam, and Bugsy teasingly asking if Ash has any other brilliant predictions. Unfortunately, Ash isn't given a chance to answer, as Ladybird dive bombs Voltorb, gnawing on it with a super effective bug bite that truly proves the old adage that love hurts. However, this love bite does manage to snap Voltorb out of its infatuation long enough for it to fire off a magical leaf that pushes Ladybug off it, but does little else. Bugsy then tells Ash that Ladybug has the same typing as his Scyther, meaning grass moves are effectively useless here. Ash doesn't let this get him down, instead taking it as a positive sign that Voltorb's back to usual, and they can finally get on with winning this battle, only to look back at Voltorb and see those hearts in its eyes again. Sighing deeply, Ash calls for Voltorb to snap out of it, causing Ladybird to laugh at him, waggling its butt at Ash as if mocking him for thinking anything can break its attraction. However, this just leaves it vulnerable to another Thundershock, and since the bug is so self-assured of its security, its defenses are down, making this an even more devastating blow. Ladybird then falls from the sky, clearly unable to battle anymore. However, before it can hit the ground, Ash lobs a ball at it, and considering its main battle tactic, the boy has no difficulty knowing which of the apricon balls in particular to use. Thankfully, Ash's aim is true, and so the love ball hits Ladybug squarely in the stomach, capturing it before landing softly in the foliage of their campsite. Excitedly, Ash runs over to greet his first capture, though when he brings it out, Ladybug is none too happy with him, sulking over its recent defeat. However, Ash has an idea what might lighten the Pokemon's spirits, and so pulling out the last muffin from the bag, offers it to Ladybug, much to Bugsy's chagrin. And that's where we'll leave things. What trials and tribulations await our heroes as they make their way through Ilex Forest? How is Ladybug going to integrate itself into Ash's team? And will the boys make it to Goldenrod City in the site of Ash's next gym battle? Find out as the journey continues.